Hi. <laughs> okay, hi. Um, let's get this set up. Beautiful. Hello and welcome. And welcome back if you haven't been here before. Um, my name is Tracy Capazzoli and I'm one of the career coaches with Flex Jobs. Uh, today we're going to be doing our second webinar. It's part of an eight webinar series uh, for remote job search, which will run every Tuesday through the end of June. Uh, that's June 30th. So our next one will be Tuesday on May 26th. So we hope you join us again. Um, just a couple of housekeeping things before we kind of get into the body of the webinar. Uh, if you happen to have a question, please put it in the Q&A section of Zoom, not the chat section. Uh, in the Q&A section, you can see other people's questions and you can go ahead and note it with a thumbs up. That way that lets us know that those are the most popular questions that we could hopefully get to for the Q&A. Uh, we do have a Flex Jobs career coach that's joining us on the back end. Um, she's kind of in the back behind scenes of the webinar uh, and she will be there to help us with the Q&A section. Uh, this webinar will last 30 minutes and we will have a short Q&A at the end. It is also being recorded and we will send you the, uh, the recap email along with this video link uh, at the end of the week. If you do not see it by Friday, please check your spam or junk folders. We have been having some experiences this past week with um, the emails uh, running into spam and to junk folders. So we really do want you to be able to access this webinar. Um, you can also find this webinar uploaded to our social media sites, um, such as Instagram and Facebook. Uh, and lastly, we may not get to everybody's questions, but I can guarantee that you guys will definitely be learning something. So let's go ahead and move forward. Uh, today's webinar is how to find remote jobs that fit you. And you may notice that I kind of divert my eyes a bit to the right, and that's because the slides are over here to the right, yet I'm looking straight ahead at you. So first, a little bit about Flex Jobs. Um, we are a job search service that specializes in remote and flexible jobs, and we have been around since 2007. Um, we have helped more than four and a half million job seekers since we began, and we have screened more than 55,000 companies. Uh, we are a membership site, which is a bit different than most job boards, um, but we do have a lot of free and public spaces on our website. So we encourage you to check that out uh, and use those uh, aspects of our site to the fullest. Uh, right over here is a picture of our coaching team, and all five of us will be presenting throughout this webinar series. So let's go ahead and move forward. So here are the topics we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about identifying transferable and remote friendly skills. Then we're going to move into finding opportunities that are going to be considered a good fit, and that's a good fit for you. Um, and those are individual based upon what you need and what you determine as a good fit. And then lastly, we're going to expand our search beyond job listings. And by a job listing, I mean a posting that you can access through a job board. Okay, so first topic will be identifying transferable and remote friendly skills. And just a little bit of background before we get into that. Uh, when I do talk about a flexible job, as in like a catchphrase flexible job, I'm going to talk about that with some um, generalities. And so that's going to refer to a position um, that's going to apply to scheduling, location, status, and hours. So if your job can be completed flexibly in any of those ways, then that's considered a flex job. So during this presentation, when you hear me say flexible job or flex job, that's what I'm referring to. If I need to be more specific, such as uh, how that work is conducted, say freelance or remote, then I'll mention it that way. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first thing we're gonna talk about are transferable skills. And a lot of you probably have heard that term transferable skills. A lot of you probably go, I know what transferable skills are or what are my trans transferable skills? 
Well, what transferable skills are, are any skill that an employer finds valuable. Um, and they cover multiple industries and to you, but at the same time, they are general, kind of um, broad. So you'll wanna ask yourself, what are mine? And start with asking yourself some of these questions that we have listed here on our slide. So start thinking about your skills as strengths. Um, and sometimes that, when you move into thinking about them as strengths, that's gonna demystify that word skill. Um, and it might allow you to start thinking about your strengths and your skills uh, while you're building confidence. And then once you realize, oh, I am actually really good at that, and that is a great transferable skill, then you can move into building bridges, which would allow you to start generating options that fit your needs and your lifestyles. So an example of transferable skills might be communication skills, leadership qualities, uh, and time management abilities. Uh, these are really important skills that you're gonna wanna convey on your resume. And you're gonna wanna link them to um, remote friendly skills, which we'll get to that in a few minutes. Uh, but you're gonna wanna demonstrate these skills. And these skills have as much value as industry specific skills or what we call hard skills. A lot of times, once you're able to identify your transferable skills and you build that bridge into a new position, it's often your transferable skills or your strengths that are gonna really help you and kind of carry you forward as you move into that role and you're learning that role and you're, you're beginning the new phases. So you kind of lean back into them because they're comfortable. They're what you know, they're what you excel in, and they're also ones that you enjoy. Okay, so now, now that you've identified them, you've asked yourself those questions, you've kind of brainstormed about that, you've written it down, maybe you've had conversations with some friends about, hey, this is what I think I'm really good at, and this is what I like. Now we have to demonstrate that on a resume. So here we have two examples. Um, the first one demonstrates how relevant sales skills and keywords can draw connections between the financial advisor position to an outside sales job. Um, the first one is in red so that you can see that that is geared definitely more towards assistance. And then that after is geared more towards sales, increasing numbers, increasing territory, making conversions. Uh, the second example really shines a spotlight on parts of the writing job that are going to relate to a social media content development position. This is where those skills are going to be more of a bridge, um, that you're going to carry those transferable skills from a writer job into this new opportunity. Um, I have a really good article that Bree, um, our behind the scenes career coach, is going to pop into chat so that you have that, uh, that article. And this is going to help you demonstrate your transferable skills on a resume. So now we move into the second um, skills, and these are your remote friendly skills. These are skills that you might already have, uh, but when you pair them with transferable skills or your strengths, um, then they become even more uh, important to employers as you move through this job search. So you're gonna wanna consider or start thinking about skills that you already have that make you a successful remote worker. When we survey employers, they often say that the skills noted on this slide are really important for flexible per, uh, professionals to demonstrate. So really start looking and thinking about how you can incorporate written and verbal communication skills, time and task management, the ability to focus, uh, to be self-managing, uh, but also proactive at the same time that you're comfortable with technology, uh, basic troubleshooting skills, that you um, are really great with embracing change and you have a desire to learn, um, and then you're familiar with digital communication tools. And I know Tony spoke about those last week in our writing a resume uh, series. So you can always go back to that to learn a little bit more about those exact digital communication tools. So now we're gonna take a moment to combine those strengths that you've identified, your transferable skills, and kind of mesh them up with your um, remote friendly skills. So here we have four examples of phrases that can actually go into the professional summary of your resume. Um, so I really like the third bullet, 
where it says technology savvy with an in inherent ability to multitask and communicate effectively on teams in person and in remote environments. That really sums it up real quick and clear that you're comfortable with technology, uh, that you're able to develop relationships, work effectively on teams, uh, and that you can work in distributed environments, behind the scenes, and in remote experiences. So just kind of take a look at these. Now, when you also use these, you're going to want to incorporate um, specific keywords that you find in job descriptions, um, as well as um, for your future resume as you move forward. And now we're gonna move into our second uh, piece, which is finding opportunities that might be a good fit. So this is a little bit different than a traditional job search. You know, in traditional job searches, you go onto the job search board, you put in the job title you're looking for, and you're really going off of what the company presents to you. Um, it's more what's given to you rather than what are you going to do for yourself. And so we're gonna kind of shift that mindset and start thinking about how am I gonna make opportunities for myself? And that's where we move forward is how am I going to find the ones that fit my needs? And so when we say good fit, uh, not only is it based off of the skills, your transferable skills, but it's also going to consider whatever your lifestyle requirements might be. Um, and that might be slift sh uh, doing a shift, uh, alternative shift or a flexible shift with, with working. Um, it could be part-time, it could be contract, freelance. So that's where you get into the details of talking about how remote work is conducted. So we're gonna talk about two techniques in this section. The first technique is using the advanced search filters. So a lot of job boards are gonna have advanced search filters or advanced search features. Um, they're sometimes hard to find, and so you might need to scroll around and really look for them. But when you find them, this is what's going to allow you control to find the most, uh, the best fitting options for your needs. And so the goal of most advanced search filters is to allow you to sort through thousands of open jobs in a very small amount of time. Really, if you think about it, it's going to allow you to search smarter, not harder. So at any given time, FlexJobs can have 20,000 jobs on their website. Um, and if you are not using your advanced search filters, then you're just spinning your wheels looking at all of these jobs and not really finding the ones that fit you with what you're looking for. But through an advanced search feature, you have greater control in finding the ones that might be the best match so that you can then spend your time more wisely on tailoring your resume tailoring the, particularly the professional summary part of the resume, incorporating those key skills, um, and then also carrying that over into your cover letter. It can also then help when you're doing that, create more confidence so that you can actually visualize that bridge as you're using those strengths to get to your new place. Uh, so some ways to consider searching are to search by your soft skills or your transferable skills as we've talked about, and then also your worker or your personal attributes. Do not discount when an employer writes and crafts that job posting and they put in there friendly, engaging, passionate, sense of humor. Those are things they're actually looking for and they actually want. So if you see those words pop up two, three, four times, go ahead and name yourself, call yourself, a friendly, engaging professional who thrives in communication and collaboration in any of that statement. Not once did I mention a job title, but rather soft skills. Um, Bree's also going to include at this time our most asked questions regarding the advanced search feature so that you have that, so that you can get real comfortable with using Flex Jobs advanced search. So our second technique, once you're looking at the advanced search feature, is to start incorporating alternative search methods, or what we call like a backdoor approach. Stop, what, stop waiting for some company to put the job out there with hopes that you find it, 
but rather go out and create your own avenue by identifying the companies you want to work for, the environments that fit your needs, that fill your soul, that answer that why question. Why do you want to work here? What is so great about this opportunity? Um, start researching companies. So one of the best things about Flex Jobs is our research company page. Um, this is another free part of our site that we really encourage you to take advantage of. Uh, this part of our site gives you free access to thousands of companies that champion flexible working options. Um, and as I mentioned previously, that might be around 55,000 companies. Um, when you're researching these companies, you can search through a variety of methods. You could look at our guides, you can search by industry, um, and you can also search by state. And what comes up when you're searching is it gives you a really well-rounded view of that company and their history in a flexible work. So it's gonna let you know whether or not they hire remote workers, freelance workers, part-time, contract, full-time. Uh, and then that way you feel real solid about that opportunity. And then from there, you bounce to other sites. And as we've always um, talked about, and I hope most career coaches have told you, you have to do detailed research and full research to get a, a full 360 view. And so that means going to other sites. Um, and I really encourage you to go to other sites, such as LinkedIn and Glassdoor, and then also the company webpage. See how they present themselves in social media. Um, and take a look at them and then read those employee reviews on Glassdoor. And throughout all this, you'll get a sense of, are my skills being met? Is this a fit for me? And from here, how can I make my own career happen? So I've had a client say recently that they do the, um, the apply and pray method or as Brie and I were just discussing, the spray and pray method, which is you just throw your resume out there and you start applying and you sit there and you wonder, please pick me, pick me, pick me. And you can't, you, in this time, where we are with, with the COVID, you need to take some control back. And by taking control and harnessing it and bringing it inward, it allows you to create your own energy and your own momentum to move forward which is going to lead us to our last phase which is expanding beyond the job listings it's great if you find that opportunity and you see that posted job and you know check i've hit every box at the same time you know and you always wonder please pick me please find me you've got to have some control and you've got to step out and make those connections so now is the time to put the first two things that we've talked about into your own um, train kind of drive your own car and create your own momentum so you're going to want to start considering making connections and cultivating your networks from these connections and these networks that you develop, whether it's through your first, second, or third degree connections, you might end up finding opportunities that you didn't know that existed. And then from there, that opens up the door to the hidden job market. These are things that you've probably heard in the past if you've ever been um, to career coaching webinars or spoken with career coaches is the hidden job market. And it's always like, ooh, how do I find the hidden job market? Where is it? You know, how do I get to it? And really it's within you, your drive. You've got to be the one to make it work. So that leads us to networking. So consider networking beyond professional networking. Start thinking about your grassroots networking. Start thinking about bringing in family, friends, neighbors, your spouse's friends, your spouse's coworkers. Um, this is the time where making those connections is really important. Consider reaching out, getting on LinkedIn. Uh, surprisingly, there still are people who are not on LinkedIn. Uh, there are people who don't understand the importance of LinkedIn. Um, and LinkedIn really allows you to create that opportunity to become more well-rounded than what your resume can do. So if you think of them, your resume and your LinkedIn, as siblings, they're both going to serve a role. They're both part of your family. They're part of your brand. They need to be out there working together in tandem. 
your resume can only carry you so far. So you need to get out there and start connecting through LinkedIn. And then from there, you can move to the third bullet, which is conducting informational interviews. Okay. So let's talk about reaching out. So let's kind of demystify the whole reaching out part of LinkedIn. How would I reach out? Why would I reach out? Do I have to include um, a private message? What do I say? That's always the scary part. And just remember, it's a conversation. You're asking for a conversation. You're wanting to learn more. You're wanting to make a connection. You'll always want to make it um, and do it in a clear, concise, and respectful manner because you are presenting yourself as a professional, but you are also just asking for a conversation. So over here, for example, let me get my mouse over there. Here we go. Right here, you have United Health Group. Um, our example down below is a gentleman who is applying for a position. They have a mutual connection, uh, Ben Barnaby. They did not know that. And so he is reaching out and asking to uh, have a quick conversation or an email exchange to learn a little bit more about this opportunity. Uh, now this would be within LinkedIn terms, a second degree connection. If you happen to fall into a third degree connection because you're dealing with um, a company that you've researched, that you've found, their missions, their values, all their jobs, everything about them just matches everything that you're looking for, then go ahead and reach out to that, that to someone in that company that would be considered a third degree. So that would be an unknown. So what you're gonna wanna look for there would be somebody who might be a manager in the department where you're going to apply um, or to their in-house recruiter or their HR generalist. So spend a little bit of time exploring the website and figuring out who that's going to be. So I have a great guide that Bree is gonna share with you that has other examples, phrases, scripts, wording that you can take to craft so that these little exchanges are not scary. Okay. And then we move into the end piece where it kind of all comes together, an informational interview. Okay, so informational interviews, again, they're opportunities for you to learn more about companies. Um, a lot of times when you're, in, when you're a, a student and you're trying to figure out maybe what major you want to do, a lot of times career advisors will say, hey, go conduct an informational interview. And so a lot of times you think about doing those um, to learn a little bit more about occupations. But you can do the same to learn about a job to see whether or not that's really a fit for you. Um, maybe everything on paper sounds great about that job. It's remote, um, you're gonna be able to work from home, uh, it's in, you, you have the degree, you have the experience, it's a great company, they've been around a long time. And so then in talking to someone through the informational interview, you learned that, oh, wait a minute, though it's remote, it's not flexible. And so you have to work a shift of 10 to 6, and that's your shift every day. And there's no flexibility. And so let's say maybe for your personal life at that time where you are, you needed the flexibility of being able to do shift work, meaning you work a few hours in the morning, take a break in the afternoon, help with kids. Maybe you're taking care of an um, elderly parent. And then you have to pick up the work in the rest of the evening. Well, a shift where you're working 10 to 6 is not going to be uh, flexible for you. For you. Though it's remote, that's still very organized, traditional work that just happens to be conducted out of your house. But if you had not conducted an informational interview, you would not have known that. So go ahead and reach out. So here we have an example of what to ask, maybe a lead-in question. You know, the more I read about your company and think about your mission, the more excited I get and I'm attracted, uh, attracted to all the amazing things you're doing. And then move into the, to the request. So, oh, oops, I hit the wrong button, sorry. 
Uh, please let me know if you have a few minutes to chat at some point in the next week or two. Give them a chance to, to let you know which mode they're most comfortable with. Maybe they prefer chat, maybe they prefer email, maybe they prefer texting um, or a phone call. Phone calls may now just occur via Zoom. Um, I don't know if we'll be doing many informational interviews that are face-to-face, -face, um, but you know, be open to their modality of how they wanna reach out to you so that you can get those questions answered. Uh, when you're conducting your informational interview, we always like to say, ask these three questions, because these are questions that mm, kind of might spur a little bit more conversation. So you could ask, what do you enjoy the most about your work? Or what did you enjoy the least? Or what really surprised you about your job? Uh, what we find is that when given the opportunity to help and to talk about themselves, people really get engaged. Uh, when they know that they get to help you uh, kind of take your hand and talk about themselves, they, they want to be involved. And, you know, most people are really giving and they want to do this. It, it allows them to um, kind of coach and mentor. And that's a side that not every job has. Uh, we have a really good informational interview guide that Brie will be putting in the chat so that you can use that for later use. So that kind of brings us to the end. We're going to do our action steps. So take us back to the beginning. You're going to identify your soft transferable skills. Again, think of those as strengths. Oh, and I forgot to mention um, when talking about that, careeronestop.org has a great skills match, a skills matcher uh, assessment that you can take. And it's going to help you identify your most common workplace skills. So that's a good place that you could start so that you can, if you, you know, don't want to brainstorm so much about it, but rather take an assessment. So once you've identified your transferable skills and you've paired them with your remote friendly skills, then you can move into demonstrating that on your resume, particularly in the professional summary piece. Then you move into creating options, generating options. Um, and you do that by searching through the advanced search features, researching companies, taking that backdoor approach, and then move into networking. Make those connections, reach out, um, and become proactive and the steward of your own career. Don't wait for it to happen, you make it happen. So put aside the spray and pay, the spray and pray, and move into forward action driving your train okay so that's going to take us to time uh, for questions like i said uh, you will receive a recap email with a recording of this webinar take a look for it towards the end of the week if you do not see it in your inbox please look in your spam or your junk folder and we're going to go ahead and move into the q a all right, thank you very much, Tracy, um, for that great presentation. Lots of good info, and everybody's really appreciative of the links as well. Um, I've been able to share all of those. If you haven't been able to see or copy and paste the links in the chat function, those will all be included in the uh, recap email that we send out at the end of the week also. So you'll be able to get those there. So let's dive in. We do have some questions, lots of good questions here. Um, so the first one is a question that is sort of related to this topic, but since you're a great career coach, we might expand it a little <laughs> bit. Um, so many people thumbs this up that it's actually the number one question. Um, okay. So <laughs> um, how do you approach an interview when the salary range is far lower than what you'd like? I'd be willing to take a lower salary, but when they ask my current salary, I want to tell the truth. So it's not that this person doesn't necessarily want to take the lower salary, they're okay with that, but how do they approach talking about what they're making now if they know it's a lot more than what this company might offer? Well, first you're going to want to make sure that you're interested in that job and that you're going to like that job and do well in that job. The big thing you're going to want to set um, kind of that employer at ease is that that job is not going to bore you. Uh, a lot of times when you move into those ranges, they might think that, oh no, they're doing this, they're making that, this job might bore them. So if you're interested in that and you wanna convey that to them, you don't have to mention salary right away. Uh, that will come in time for conversation, but when it does get to that time and you have to discuss your range, 
you can mention that it is a bit of a, that it is a drop. Not, you don't have to go into talking about how big that drop is and then fill in the reasons why you want to do it. Um, and that would be what you're going to get out of that job. Again, if you've moved to that part of the interview, more than likely you have conveyed enough and the belief enough that you're not going to get bored with that job. All right, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And okay, so we've got um, a question here about my concern uh, is about LinkedIn is that I have a wide variety of positions I can apply for and I try to gear each resume I submit for that particular job. Mm -hmm. With LinkedIn, can I use a generic resume? I think this question is probably asking about when you're filling out your LinkedIn profile, um, how, how do you do that generic profile even though you're, you should tailor your resume for each okay. job? Yes. So think of your LinkedIn as the more extroverted sibling. It can be more well-rounded. So it kind of is gonna walk that line of professional personal. And so when you're in LinkedIn in that top part that talks about why and about and who you are, that's where you get to talk about yourself being multifaceted, multi-potential, that you dabbled in this and that, but always bring it back with a cohesive reason as to why you've done those things because it fills your soul it allows you to grow this way you're a big traveler so you enjoy incorporating travel and into different jobs and moving around so that allows that and then when you go further down start following other groups interest groups that might be um, personal related influencers hobbies and so when a recruiter comes and looks at that they get a fuller sense of who you are. They can kind of actually touch you and be like, ah, I get it. Now I see. So you don't have to be as, as kind of harnessed or, or boxed in in your LinkedIn as you do with your resume because that needs to be more of a mirrored matchup to the job that you're applying. Awesome. Great. Great tips. Um, okay. So let's see. Uh, this is a question that a lot of folks have. I don't have a college degree, but I've climbed myself to successful roles um, in the food industry, but I want to switch paths. Should I put that I have a high school degree? I attended two years uh, um, of college, but how do you properly add that to your resume? So essentially this person doesn't want to be discounted because they don't have the official degree on their resume, but they definitely have the experience to make up for it, it sounds like. So how would you approach that on somebody's resume? Okay. So you're definitely going to want to put in the word bachelor's somehow or associate's degree somehow into the education part of your resume. And that's um, not to highlight that you don't have that, but to check the box for the ATS systems. Because when the resume gets scanned through that electronic applicant tracking system, uh, it's searching for that word bachelor's or associate's degree, whatever that job description has. And so you want to be able to put that in there. So you could put a phrase that says, uh, completed coursework towards a bachelor's degree in blah, blah, blah. Or um, if you did not even go to college, which is a, a what a lot of people have, you could put in lieu of a bachelor's degree, extensive and comprehensive experience in, and you put customer service, collaboration, assistance, and coordination. And there, as you notice, nothing is in there tied to an industry, but rather to soft skills. Awesome. All right. Um, okay. And so there's two questions left. I actually want to cover one of these because it's just a, a random quick question that I know the okay. answer to. And I'm sure a lot of people have this question. So um, this person's asking, when you complete a search on FlexJobs, it shows multiple job postings recently posted over the last few days and weeks. Is it safe to assume all job postings shown in the search, even some that are weeks or months back, are still active or still actively hiring? Just want to make sure as a user... Um, that you don't waste your time. So yes, great question. Um, the Yes, as far as we can tell, all of the jobs that are posted on FlexJobs, if they're still there, they are actively hiring. Now that's as far as we can tell. Of course, there are some employers who don't let us know when they've hired or when they've taken down a job right away. But we do have a team of folks that go through our jobs database and hand 
clean the database. So they actually go through every single job listing <laughs> and make sure that it is still an active listing. So um, first of all, kudos to those people because that sounds like an, a, a very detail-oriented job that I would <laughs> maybe does. lose my mind doing. Um, but <laughs> I am glad that they exist. And so yes, they, the jobs in our database should be hiring or actively hiring. However, something always slips through the cracks. So if you do come across a job that you find is no longer hiring, Hiring, there's an option to flag that job on our site and you can flag it and select this job has expired and then we know and we can take it down so nobody else will see it um, so you can help us out a little bit for, for the most part they are all still actively hiring um, and then last question for Tracy and thank you Tracy for hanging in there a little yeah. longer here um, so the question uh, this is the the number one question right now um, oh, okay. I've had an administrative manager generalist job for about 20 years 16 years mm -hmm. working remote I have great transferable skills, but lots of jobs require very specific experience and or technologies. How do I approach that? Um, so it sounds like, uh, you know, they have lots of work experience, they have great transferable skills, but when they look at the jobs that they're, they're looking for now, they require very specific experience or technologies. How do you kind of display that on your resume? How would you suggest somebody approach that or go about learning what they don't already know? Okay. So one, if you have transferable skills that you've already identified from your work experience that are noted within the job posting, include that into your professional summary piece. Um, for the technologies piece, if we're talking about digital communication skills or programs that they're mentioning, um, and you have some of those, then you're gonna wanna create a technical uh, section within the resume and you put that stuff in there. And then in the body of the resume, that's the professional experience piece. Um, not every sentence or every bullet that's on that resume is gonna end in hard hitting facts, but they can be written in ways to incorporate and demonstrate worth through soft skills. So you can always end a sentence with utilizing problems, problems, uh, speak, problem solving skills or incorporating uh, collaboration and constant communication for, uh, to achieve business results. So you can put something like that in there as well to demonstrate your, your worth. Then if you find that certain technologies keep popping up, um, repeatedly on various types of jobs or you notice it within a certain employer, then that's key for you to go out and start spending a little bit of time on that digital communication. And that might be taking a look at their tutorial, if you can find it online, um, maybe through YouTube or through uh, that digital communication website to learn a little bit about that to see um, how you're going to go ahead and incorporate that into your new work. All right. Thank you so much. And that brings us to the end. Thank you, everybody, for hanging in there a right. little bit late. But I'll throw it back to Tracy to wrap things up and, and say goodbye. <laughs> okay. So uh, thank you again for joining us. It's been great. I had a great time. Uh, don't forget, next, uh, next Tuesday, same time, May 26th, we're going to be looking at our third webinar, and that is creating an action plan for your remote job search. So again, take a look at your email later in the week for the recap email and the webinar link. Uh, we thank you for being here and we appreciate you. Have a good day.